Hi, good day. We are the group 1 and we are going to present the food service equipment and the food service planning and design. Unit objectives. The students will be able to first describe food preparation equipment and identify types of ranges and ovens. Explain broilers, tilting bracing pans, griddles, deep fat fryers, steam cookers, ventilation hoods, and common non-cooking food service equipment. Third, describe dishwashing machines and waste disposals. Summarize food service equipment, maintenance issues. Describe the concept development process for food service facilities and identify regulations that affect the construction and operation of food service facilities. And lastly, summarize design issues in the receiving, storage, kitchen areas, and the dining room. The unit topics are types of food service equipment, maintaining food service equipment, concept of development, and lastly, the design of function areas. Food service equipment may be defined as all tools, utensils, crockery, and cutlery necessary for the preparation, cooking, holding, serving of food, and washing. Equipment should be designed, constructed, finished that it can be easily cleaned, disinfected safely without any specific tools. My name is Irene Batalia and I am going to present the types of food service equipment. Preparation equipment. It includes the mixers, food processors, and slicers. A mixer is an electric appliance used for mixing foods. Food processor is an electric kitchen appliance used for chopping, mixing, or pouring foods. And the slicer is a thin bladed knife used for slicing. Cooking equipment. First is the ranges. On the solid top, we have the fry top. Fry top is a smooth, or rib plate for cooking at high temperature that has a continuous surface. On the open top, we have the induction. Induction refers to the generation of heat through the use of magnetism. Next one is the oven. Oven is an enclosed compartment as in a kitchen range for cooking and heating food. There are three types of oven. These are the conventional, convection, and the radiation oven. A convection oven is an oven that has fans to circulate around the air. On the other hand, the conventional ovens, which do not have fans, rely primarily on radiation from the oven walls and, to a lesser extent, on natural convection caused by temperature differences. Next one is the broilers. Broilers is an element in an oven, usually located near the top, that provides high, direct heat, much like a grill. There are three types of broilers. These are the overhead broiler, rotisserie broiler, and the char broiler. Tilting bracing pans, also called as fry pan, that can serve as a griddle for preparing bacon, burger, and grilled sandwiches. Next one is the griddles. It is a heavy, flat iron plate that is heated and used for cooking food. Deep fat fryers is an electric appliance that heats fat oil into which food is immersed for frying. Steam cookers, also called as food steamers, is used to cook food with steam heat. There are two types of steam cookers. These are the steam jacketed kettle and the compartment steamers. And lastly, the ventilation hoods. Ventilation hood is used to remove hazards or unwanted contaminants. That's all for my report. The next presenter will be Daniela Bumacod. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Irene Batalia. Good day, everyone. I am Daniela Bumacod, and let's continue the report. Holding tables. It is a small table that you can place in a small area in the kitchen. Next is a hot and cold beverage equipment. 
There are two types of hot and cold beverage equipment. Number one is coffee brewing and dispensing equipment. Coffee brewing equipment means brewed and liquid coffee equipment, including coffee brewers and grinders, cocoa cappuccino dispensing machine, and similar machines. Soda dispensing equipment. It is an apparatus with delivery tube and faucet for growing soda water. The equipment and counter for the per preparation and serving of sodas, sundaes, and ice cream. Refrigerator and freezer. A large appliance housing one compartment for refrigerating food and another for freezing. The difference of freezer and the refrigerator. Freezer is an appliance or room used to store food or other perishable items, while refrigerator is a household appliance used for keeping food fresh by refrigeration. Ice machine. Ice machine work to produce a bat of ice through a process known as a diabetic cooling. Sanitation equipment and food service. Number one is this washing machine. A dishwasher is an electrically operated machine that washes and dries plates, saucepans, and cutlery. There are four types of dishwashing machine. First one, the door type. A door type is dishwasher is specifically designed to wash a single rack of dishes at a time, also called a pass-through operation. Next one is conveyor dishwasher. Carrying dishes, flatware, and glasses through a rinse cycle, wash cycle, and sanitation cycle. To quickly and thoroughly clean dozens or hundreds of rocks per hour. Light type dishwasher. Has a loading area where the items to be washed as placed. You can place your dishes directly onto the belt or use a rack for more delicate items like glassware. This dishwasher wrap up the process with a final rinse at 180 degrees Fahrenheit for proper sanitation. Energy saving. Energy saving setting on a dishwasher helps to lower the wash and rinse temperature during cycle. In turn, using less energy that would have otherwise been used to heat the water. Waste disposal. It is a device usually electrically powered installed under a kitchen sink between the sink drain and the trap. The disposal unit shreds food waste into pieces small enough, generally less than 2 mm to pass through. Managing a restaurant kitchen is so much more than overseeing the staff and placing food orders. All the equipment, system, and services in the commercial kitchen require a routine maintenance. Hi, my name is Darlene Aquino and we're going to discuss to you what is maintaining food service equipment all about. So maintaining food service equipment, an example of how the engineering departments contributes to the efficiency of the other departments. What do we mean by that? We all know that engineering department played an important role on developing innovative devices to bring out advanced materials into the world. Same with the food service equipment. Because of the advanced technology, a lot of machines and equipment have developed in our industry. That's why it is important that we maintain the quality of each equipment that we use in order to make a successful and efficient productivity. So next is the food and beverage department employees and maintenance employees. These two departments played an important role in the kitchen's or restaurant's success. Next is training kitchen employees to take proper care of the equipment. The kitchen staff must not only good in skills, but they must have at least proper training on how to take a good care on the equipment that they use in order to avoid hazard in the kitchen. So training is very important. Next is one potential difficulty with food service equipment involves installation. In this part, it is important that we have a proper planning before we install or place the equipment in the right place to avoid difficulties when we start using them and also to have a proper smooth operation in the kitchen. Next is the importance of equipment manuals. Each of the kitchen staff must know and understand the manuals before using the equipment for their safety and also to avoid potential danger or misuse of the equipment. So next is the equipment maintenance needs. There are two maintenance suggestions that everyone should heed. Number one, 
follow the equipment manufacturer's recommended maintenance program. Number two, allow only trained maintenance employees or outside service representatives to work on the equipment. And last but not the least, maintenance of preparation and cooking equipment. So we have here too, educating the kitchen staff and the role of maintenance staff. And that will be all. Thank you for listening. In maintaining of equipments needed, we must practice the proper preparation and maintaining of cooking equipments. Also, to sure food service equipment is operating properly, it requires us to use such specialized tools just like air velocity meter, electrical test meter, pyrometer, and various types of thermometer, radio frequency monitor. In maintaining gas stove, we must monthly inspect unit and check operation. Check the, that unit is being cleaned properly. Advise FNB director of any cleaning problems. While semi-annually, we, we must need, need to remove top burners, clean and degrade. Grind it burner gas bulbs with fine grinding paste. Reassemble and check operation. Check for leaks and adjust burner as required. Remove oven burner, clean and de degrade. Check thermo, couple and adjust position in flame. Check gas sa safety bulbs operation. Check operation of oven door. Adjust counterweight and chains of as required. Replace any missing or damage controls, knobs, screens. In maintaining flat top grill gas, we must monthly inspect unit and check operation. Check that unit is being cleaned properly. Advise F and B director of any cleaning problems. While semi-annually, we, we need to remove grill top, check for crack and rocks. Remove burn, burner and clean. Clean and degrade de base section. Reassemble and check operation. Adjust burner setting as required. Check gas connection for leaks. Replace missing or damaged control knob screen. And in maintaining deep fat fryer, we must monthly inspect unit and check operation. Check that unit is being cleaned properly. Advise FNB director of any cleaning problem. Checks, check safety cutouts of operating. While semi-annually, we need to inspect thermostat bulb for, for damage, inspect sub submersible elements for damage, check on electrical wiring and connection, tighten or replace as required, check operation of thermostat, calibrate as required. Maintaining food service equipment Equipment maintenance needs maintenance of storage, and service equipment. Holding or steam tables often have separate thermostats, coffee urns and makers, maintenance efforts for refrigerators, freezers, and ice machines, food service refrigeration equipment, water cool condensers. Here is a sample preventive maintenance procedures for a walk in cooler. Condensing unit. Number one, a blowout condenser coil. Use degreaser in kitchen locations. Two, check operation of unit gas charge and oil level in compressor. Three, lubricate fan motor with three drops of three in one oil. Number four, check for any loose bolts or screw and tighten. Number five, check electrical connection. Tighten as required. In walk-in box, number one, check door seals, adjust or replace as required. Number two, check hinges for, for wear and tighten any loose screws. Number three, check latch and strike, adjust as required, tighten loose screws. Number four, check box temperature. Adjust as required. Number five, ensure product is properly stored and inside is kept clean. Number six, 
report any problems with storage or cleanliness to F&B director. Maintaining food service equipment. Equipment maintenance needs maintenance of sanitation equipment. Preventive maintenance activities for dishwasher. Number one, checking thermometers and gauges, solenoid valves, seals electrical connections, heating elements, equipment mounting brackets, water temperatures, and pump motors. Here is the sample maintenance checklist for dishwasher. Number one, inspect machine and check operation. Number two, check wash and rinse temperatures. Wash temperature 140 degree Fahrenheit to rinse temperature 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Check all screens in place. Number one, carry out main maintain action number 37D. Number two, Check machine for loose handles, levers, etc. Number three, check heating elements, record amperage. Number four, check all electrical connections. Number five, check pumps, valves, dispensers, etc. Number six, check piping to pumps in clear. Number seven, carry out any repairs to defect found. Concept Development Exhibit 5 Preliminary Decisions Needed to Plan Food Service Facilities The type of food service facility is the coffee shop, the cafeteria, quick service, and fine dining. Menu Description is the number of menu items, quality of menu items, and price range, and type of menu items. The location of facility is suburban, urban, and rural. The service styles must be table, counter, table side, and takeout. The interior environment is formal, informal, trendy, and theme. The design objectives must be the number of turns, check average, quiet, quiet atmosphere, and noisy atmosphere. The operating characteristic must be days and hours of operation and the number of seats. And lastly, the special characteristics is the banquet rooms, salad bars, alcoholic beverage service. A restaurant's design is an important part of attracting and keeping customers and being competitive in the current market. So a restaurant design must be essential to your marketing restaurant strategy since the way your restaurant looks will be crucial to your branding. Your design that will be the first thing that your customer will notice as he or she walk through the doors. The first impression will dictate how they perceive your brand, what level of service they expect, and what kind of time they anticipate and if they want to come back again. An architect or food facilities design consultant. The market strategy is a detailed profile of your potential guest, and the menu should reflect the needs and desires of the target market. Defining the market and the menu will help determine the restaurant's operating characteristics, and the specific type of food service facility may be identified as a result of decisions about the menu and the style of service. Concept Development Feasibility. Ang feasibility ay mahalaga dahil sa pamamagitan nito, natutukoy kung karapat dapat bang itayo ang isang proyekto, negosyo o pananaliksik. Number one, a competitive analysis. And then next, the number of seats in dining room, the forecast, check a beverage, food and beverage cost, and cost for the land, building, furniture, fixed fixtures, and equipment. The last, if project income is less than expenses, revaluate the idea. Regulation Zoning Codes A zoning ordinance is a rule that defines how property in specific geographic zones can be used. Zoning Codes 
regulations for setback parking easements and construction standards the second the international building code the international fire code and the national fire protection associations nfpa life safety code a section on compatibility hi classmate hi sir regulations U.S. Food and Drug Administration and Local Health Department Una The 2005 Food Code Next The Food and Drug Administration In short, FDA The Centers of Disease Control and Prevention In short CDC US Department of Health and Human Services in short HHS and the Food Safety and in Infections Service in short FSIS of the US Department of Agriculture in short, USDA. Regulations The Food Code Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point In short, HACCP Guidelines ADA Regulations Una, The American with Disabilities Act of 1990 What is reasonable accommodation? Ano-ano kaya? Wheelchair accessible? Brain bell, bell devices and telephone handset amplifiers. Thank you. Good day everyone. My name is Jedeline Sabana and I will discuss the design of function areas. In a working station, we have receiving area, the, the area designated for the delivery and inspection of inventory items. The foundation for the quality of the menu items and back tack should be hidden from street traffic and any dining room windows. This is the pictures which we can see this back duck is covered and has overhead lighting, a wide door with plastic strips for greater energy efficiency, bumpers along the top edge of the duck, and a drain so the duck area can be hosed down when necessary. And receiving area, back duck also should be visible from a back window, a roof overhang, and the driveway large enough for trucks. The exact size of the dock, the frequency and size of deliveries. Hand truck, platform carts, utility carts, and conveyor roller system are equipments for unloading deliveries. And also in receiving area, we have inspection area located inside the restaurant adjacent to the delivery door. Well lighted, floor should be smooth. The amount of space, the volume, and type of food received. Scales, an instrument or machine for weighing. And storage areas, being positioned between the receiving area and the kitchen. The amount of storage space, the number of meals prepared, the frequency of deliveries, the variety of menu items, and inventory policies. The North American Association of Food Equipment Manufacturers rule of thumb of one half cubic foot per meal and these are the formula for dry storage area required volume per meal times number of meals between deliveries over average usable height times fraction of usable storeroom floor area and design factors for food storage ventilation should be, should be sufficient in dry storage facilities we have surfaces floors and 
walls. The room tem temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Window should be not be included. Light intensity must be 10 foot candles, 30 inches above the finished floor. Storage areas design factors for food storage. We have walk in refrigerators and freezers. Recommended shelving materials, corrosion resistant metals. We have truck shelving, convenient and simple to use, and a cantilevered shelving, storage system designed to store long or bulky materials for virtually any length, and vertical shelving, an automated storage. Shelving units should not exceed 6 feet high. The bottom shelf should be at least 6 inches above the finished floor. The Next topic we'll discuss by Miss Emeline Cabano. Cabangon. Thank you. The topic is design of function areas. So, storage areas under design factors for food storage and design factors for non-food storage. So, for the design factors for food storage, here are the compressor and condenser unit or of walk-in, refrigerator, and freezers remote or self-contained, while the design factors for non-food storage is the alcoholic beverage, lockable area, and closed-circuit television, and unpasteurized beers. It should be placed on 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 38 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. Design factors for non-food storage. So, for the red wine, it should be placed in a place with, where it has 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. So for the white wine and sparkling wine, 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. So the amount of storage space, the number of items, the volume use, and the frequency of the delivery. So the kitchen, the physical environment in the kitchen, the 2005 food code recommends a light level of at least 50 foot candles at a surface where employees are performing food preparation activities. So white or off-white is typically used in the kitchen. Under the design of function areas, the kitchen, so preparation, and the griddle. So under the preparation, the cold food preparation area and the hot food production area. Under the griddle, we have the soup and sauce and steaming and so on and so forth. So this is the sample kitchen layout. So these are the preparation procedures for bacon, eggs, ham, pancake, and toast. Another sample workstation layout. Design kitchen workstation. Selecting equipment, the food facilities design consultant or food service manager, equipment and supply vendors, and independent manufacturers. Equipment selection criteria. Need and function. Versatility or multi-purpose use. Training requirement. Safety sanitation. Employee use. Construction method. Service requirements. Maintenance requirements. Capacity. Energy requirements and costs. Design kitchen workstation sample. First is the straight line equipment configuration, L-shape equipment configuration, the U-shape equipment configuration, parallel back-to-back -back equipment configuration, and lastly, parallel face-to-face -face equipment configuration. Thank you for listening. Design of function areas. The kitchen. Other kitchen areas. Holding and service should be located between the kitchen's food production areas and the dining room. The service pickup site. Holding tables. A service bar is located adjacent to the holding and service area. Service bar layout. The volume of business. The variety of beverage offered. The type of beverage dispensing system used. And the level of security desired. The cold food holding area may be located adjacent to the pantry. Other kitchen's areas are ware washing. The ware washing area should be located close to the door from the kitchen to the dining room. The dish washing machine. Pot washing. The pot washing area may be located adjacent to the ware washing area or close to the hot food production. Other kitchen areas are pot washing, a three-compartment sink for manual pot washing. Number one, soaking and washing. Two, rinsing.
Number three, sanitizing. Larger motors to increase the velocity of water. The compartment size depends on the size of pots to be washed. The dining room. The dining room should be located adjacent to the holding and service area. The number of seats and table sizes. Based on the forecasted market share, 500 dinners, the number of turns and the number of two stops, four stops and six stops. The size and type of tables and chairs, the arrangement of the tables and the space requirement for service stations, influence the size of the dining room, the width of tables, the arrangement of tables and diagonals, booths, and service stations. Thank you for listening.